Hi, I'm Lois Lindstrom. Welcome to the Bookman's Corner. Today our guest is Dr. Frank Wildman, who is an educator and recognized authority in the Feldenkrais Method. And we will be exploring today his latest book, Change Your Age, Using Your Body and Brain to Feel Younger, Stronger, and More Fit. He joins us from Berkeley, California, where he maintains a private practice. And welcome to the East Coast, and well, welcome to Arlington. Thank you, Lois. <laughs> and, um, and also, I'm so interested in this Feldenkrais method. I've never mm -hmm. heard about it, and I was so intrigued with your book, because you really do promote agility and uh, balance and how to, how to be fit. And I think that everyone wants to be uh, feeling younger and mm -hmm. more fit. Yes, yes. And, um, and you've written a couple of books here. Um, how does your new book uh, differ from the book that you wrote, uh, The Busy Person's Guide to Easier Movement? Ah. Well, it's different in that it's simpler for people to understand. Okay. It, it's, it's got movement lessons inside of it. Mm -hmm. We call them lessons. Okay. Because what people really need to do is learn how to move uh, differently. Really? Learn how well, to move differently? a lot of people think that being fit is, is strictly a matter of Repetition. That's right. <laughs> you know? That's right. And, and you have to do it all the time. But actually, a big factor in fitness is how intelligent you can make your body. How intelligent you can make your body. Yes. yes. How can you teach yourself to do new things? Okay. Like we did as infants. All of us went through this phase okay. as infants and children of novelty and learning new things so every we day. Know, in other words, we learned how to crawl first, and then we learned how to pull ourselves up so we could start to stand and things then walk. Things like that. That's okay. right. Yes. So it's, it's, it's a new awareness thing mm -hmm. that you have, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, what is this Feldenkrais method? It was developed by Moshe Feldenkrais, right? Yeah, Moshe Feldenkrais was, uh, well, he had several things. He had a background in engineering okay. and nuclear physics. Okay. And he's the man who was largely responsible for bringing judo to the Western world. Really? Bringing judo to the yeah. Western world? Yeah. Wow. He was a judo master. Okay. Uh, I can't remember which degree of black belt, but as high as you can now, go. Now, where, where did he live? Did he live in, where in the States did he live? Did he live in California? Um, no, he came to California over many years. Okay. I spent about 10 years with him there uh, training people. Okay. And uh, he lived in Israel. Okay, from Israel. And then, and then, then he moved to the States? Uh, no, nope. he came. He flew uh, around a lot. So, so he, he was like, a, like he was going to Europe and to the states, to, to explaining his yes. method, right? Yeah, he was teaching people his mm -hmm. method, okay. and and trying to find people who could be trained to eventually train other people. Okay, and what and why uh, did he just establish this? What what needs did he see? What what caused him to get involved with this? Mm. I think that what what happened with him was he had a crippling knee injury. Okay. This was many years ago, back in the 30s. Back in the 30s? Yes, wow. Yes. Well, he died 25 years ago. Sure, sure. Yeah. So they didn't have very good knee surgeries then. Yes. So he was thinking, well, what can I do for myself? Right, because I'm limping, How, right? Yes, exactly, and it hurts. Right, right. <laughs> and what was offered as a medical solution was pretty poor. Okay. So he thought, maybe I could teach myself. How could I train myself to be able to walk differently, move my back and my hips differently, Okay. Move my feet differently so that the stress in my knee and the pain in my knee would not be so, would not be so uh, uncomfortable. That's right. That's and, right. He's, and he was able to do that. He then. was able to do that. And he, then he realized that he had a, a way of thinking about okay. this called, okay. that he decided to name the Feldenkrais Method. The Feldenkrais Method. He named it after himself, okay. of course. And because it was so methodical. Okay. And therefore teachable. Okay. So I think that people who, who learn about this method will find that they can they can teach themselves. My concern in Change Your Age was to make the, the complexity of, of the Feldenkrais method simple enough that most people could go, I'll do this. Okay. I understand this, and I can I Now, can now isn't your background, aren't you a trained dancer? Aren't you a trained dancer? Originally, yeah. Originally. Well, so, many years ago. <laughs> and so you were interested in movement anyway, right? I always was, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, so this was just a natural progression, right? It, it was a very natural progression. I was interested in, uh, my background is in psychology, so okay. I, I, I moved back and forth from the world of the arts and right. the, the world of Well, therapies. I think it's, I think it's interesting. That the name of your book is Change Your Age, you know, using your body and brain to feel younger and stronger uh, and more fit. And the thing is... Um, usually you think about being younger, it's like less wrinkles or, you know, you have better skin and better hair. You know, women are <laughs> focused on that. And I think um, 
but really, you can actually walk so you look younger, right? I mean, how? Yes, yes, and, and people don't realize this yet. They watch television and, and see people who can act and just become very old. Really? Right before your eyes. Hunch their shoulders over. I mean, yeah. isn't, isn't it all about posture, though? I mean, that, isn't that the first thing you... Uh, is there a way you can teach people to have better posture? First, people need to really have better posture and not just hold themselves stiffly in some way is to be able to move more easily. So okay. people have to learn how can they move with less tension and excess amounts of effort in their work. So you think that the majority of people are walking around that if they're feeling tension when they're moving. They, there's stress there. They, they, they're, not, they're not walking in a relaxed fashion. Is that what you're saying? So if I just reach for this cup, okay. I could do it like this with a lot of effort and strain my hand and strain my shoulder mm -hmm. on my way to a repetitive strain injury. <laughs> oh! Okay. Okay. Or... We can do it very lightly and easily, and it feels light and easy, and it doesn't take that much effort in the muscles. Okay. So you can reduce the amount of effort to perform the same work. It's, but you have to think about that, right? You have to, yes. s you have to, say, you have to say to yourself, this is, this is natural. This is not something I have to really, I can just eat, quickly pick this up and not be... Well, what's interesting about it is that the first thing you learned when you were very young was to bring your hands to your mouth. Right, that's true. And then... There might be social conditions mm -hmm. that you grew up with mm -hmm. where that, that act alone could have anxiety associated with it. Aha, uh -huh. I mm. see, I see. And so, so people can have that expressed in many different ways, from eating disorders to hunching their shoulders and mm -hmm. protecting their food <laughs> in <laughs> well, themselves. Well, one of the things I thought was very interesting in your book was that you, you, you talked about balance. And I mm. think as people get older, the balance seems to be more um, shaky. I mean, mm. that, I mean, you notice that with older people. That yes. that there's not that, and so what, what causes that? What, 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 and how can you improve balance? Well, the, the older we get, the more decades we have okay. to practice our bad habits. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's, oh, oh, practice our bad habits. Yes. Okay. And that's what people do. Oh. So not all older people get that way. Okay. So a lot of people do because they, well, let's take the example of, of this hunching over. So if you're hunched over like this, you have to do movements in your belly and your pelvis in order to contribute to that. So I can sit like this and stay there maybe for hours. I can look at a computer screen and it'll focus my attention on what I'm doing so I won't notice my posture. So it's a lack of awareness, right? Yes. You, people aren't aware that they're hunched over. They don't know what they're doing, no. Okay. Because finally the signal gets strong enough from the body and goes, ow, my neck hurts. Yes. Or, ouch, my shoulders hurt. Right. Or, right. oh, my back is aching. Whatever it is. Okay. But that's the final signal. Aha. Uh -huh. Right? Uh -huh. And people usually don't know how to listen to the earlier signals. I see. So that's what I do, is I try to teach people how to pay attention and how to tune in to the signals of their body and how they can change the way that they move. Well, if you change the way you move, you've changed your age. That's right. That's well. Let me, let's let's. Do you want to get up and demonstrate this to me right now? With let's. Sure. I would like to sure, show, show our viewers how we would do this. Now let's we'll go. just carefully go to the <laughs> to the mat. Now let's talk about balance. Okay. What can I do to have better balance? Okay. What, what, what exercise can I do? Let me give you something simple. Come a little bit closer. Okay. And you have your feet parallel. Okay. Yeah. So they're okay. Now. Pretend that you were one unit, that you didn't have any joints. Okay. No, <laughs> no joints. No joints. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to add one joint. Okay. We'll add your left hip joint. Left hip joint. Your okay. left hip joint. Okay. That's the only joint that can move. Okay. So now if you took your right foot forwards, okay. and that was the only joint, you'd have to go backwards. You would. you go <laughs> Whoa. backwards. Whoa. So, so now <laughs> so I... So that I, challenges your balance. It does. Yes. So if you had something to hold on to, yeah, I, just, could, uh, I could right. a table, I could yeah, hold right. your hand, okay, whatever. Okay. I, okay. And and so, so, you go so, forward, so, so, so you go forward, and, and then and you, you, you keep let the, yourself go backwards, okay, okay. and learn to stand high on that left hip joint. Okay. And okay. then you go backwards. Okay. Just a little bit. You go forwards there with the rest of your That's body. That's right. Because you're one unit. Yes, yeah. you're one unit. Yeah. And then go forwards again. Okay. And you can do that several times. Okay. And and that and that basically you keep doing that. If you did that like you, tw two or three times a week. Just, you know, very simply. Oh, that would be enough. I tell people five minutes a day, two or three times a week. Five okay. minutes a day. Yes. Five minutes a day. That would be a, a, okay. enough. And you'll have it. You'll, in other words, you'll, your, your mind will remember. You'll it. retrain your brain. You'll retrain your brain. Okay. And you'll learn how to stand high up 
on your hip joints. Okay. Most people don't realize that when they're walking mm -hmm. or doing simple things, they're actually standing on one leg. Okay. Most of the time when you're walking, you're on one leg. Okay. <laughs> now, what about people that have stiff um, l legs and knees? They feel, mm. they, they feel stiff in mm. the morning when they get up. They're very stiff. Yes. What, what can you do to alleviate, really. alleviate that? What, what can be done? We could do something just standing here. Like what? Huh? So, for example, could you lift the right heel? Okay. And set it down. Yeah, that's very simple. It's easy. Do it a few times. Okay. One. A few times. Don't count. Because you want to go inside and sense. How are you doing it? A big okay. problem with exercise programs is going by numbers. Okay. So, now, now, that's enough times. Okay. You just do it a few times. Okay, a few times. I tell people exactly a bunch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then what? Now, lift the ball of the foot. And oh, oh, so oh. the heel stays down. The same and foot, right? you lift right? the same foot, the okay. toes and the ball, and feel inside. How does your pelvis work? How does your knee straighten? So be aware of all the yes, sensations. to observe all those things sensations. Okay. that enable you to lift the ball of the foot. Okay. And if the knee was really sore, some people can't do it unless they take their pelvis way back. Okay. Yeah. Well, that wasn't so hard. No, okay. No. Now you did the heel, you did the ball. So rock from one to the other. Heel, rock. ball. Right. Like, heel, like you're dancing, ball. right? Your, your arms might just start to move. <laughs> That's right. You're right. Now, right. some people's arms don't move because they hold their shoulders and arms stiffly. But you, do, you don't. <laughs> your arms are moving. And that, and that, and, and that's now, in order to do that, mm -hmm. you have to balance very well. You have to balance on leg. one side to, yes. to do that. Yes. That's right. That's and you right. learn to balance while you're moving a lot. Okay. So that's a, that's a good exercise that's to a, do, right? Yes. To, to, again, to improve your... It improves your posture and your it improves posture. your ability to move your hips and your knees in this case. Okay. Very yeah. good. <laughs> very good. So, all right. Well, that's... And so, well, let's talk more about the other concepts here. We can... Go up here and so check out. Uh, one of the things that is very difficult for people is to be able to sit down. I know. I just grabbed the table. Okay. <laughs> I'm thinking, well, that's right. Well, so what many people do as, as they get older is, is they use their hands to push on the chair or to push, push, on to push so up. So they use their arms to get up. They do. That's right. That's and right. That's a very visible sign of aging. It is, isn't it? Because you don't see teenagers doing that, do they? They just kind of fall, come zooming, zooming out of the chair, right? Well, they zoom out of the chair, and because of that, because they can just zoom that's and right. use momentum. That, that's yeah. right. They're, they're using momentum, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So, therefore, they don't feel the need to learn anything. Uh. <laughs> that could be a problem with teenagers. <laughs> that's right. That's true. <laughs> and if you don't feel that you need to learn anything because you can do it so easily. That's right. If you suddenly lose the mass strength of your legs the ability to really throw yourself around, then you can get to the point where you go, oh, I can't do it, so I'll use my arms. And then you use your legs still less. Yes, that's right. So people have to learn things that they could do it, to mobilize themselves to move in a chair more easily, more comfortably. So like, what's a good idea in terms of not using your um, hands to get up? I mean, you, you really have to strengthen, you have to use your, your legs and your... Um, abdomen, your, your muscles in your... Well, a simple the, thing. The there's, there's many things. But one simple thing I tell people to do is, well, cross your arms. Cross your arms? <laughs> well, then you can't use your hands to push up. <laughs> and then lift your, lift your elbows and, oh. Wow. Because I tell people, if you lift your arms with, your, with them crossed and just reach out a little bit, you'll probably fall up over your feet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. That's a good exercise. Oh, it's... Very simple. It's, it's helped countless... Older people who feel like, oh, I can't get up, and you see the strain and the effort. Yeah. But it doesn't need to be there. You, you do have to be able to move your arms like this a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you don't. And then that's it. Just and that's it. You just use your arms and, and go forward. Oh, that's yeah. good. That's good. Whew, that's amazing. Well, there are things that people need to to learn. They have to put their feet in the right place. Okay. There are people who sit with their legs so far out in front of them that they really can't get up. Okay. So they think, oh, I can so go where my feet are. So but you have to put your feet. Right under you. Under yourself. Okay. Okay. Now, is, is your book something uh, that someone could easily follow without an instructor? Because so many yes. people need someone to tell them what to do. And mm. so you feel like you've got very explicit... Uh, I think it's explicit and it's got a lot of photographs to okay. assist people to, ah, okay. oh, yes, I can see what to do. Okay. Oh, that's good. That's good. And do you think the, the, the lessons guide you toward more flexibility and strength? And 
or is it more? Yes. Hmm. Because, I mean, so many people are hearing about, you know, strength training, you know, lift some weights, and <laughs> yes. that's, so, that's so, in terms of developing bone mass, mass and everything, you know, yes. you should lift weights. Um, well, does this me method have anything to do with that? A lot of things will Im improve bone density. Okay. The like thing, what? If you wanted to really develop the density of your bones and protect your hips, mm -hmm. the best exercise, and this is current research on this, is to jump. To jump? To jump. Wow, like jumping jacks? People, <laughs> exactly. So people used to think, well, walking, just walk enough. Right. So there are now enough studies that have conclusively shown that you have to walk a long time to equal a few minutes of jumping. Well, because in jumping, you have more vertical forces but, but, going no, directly but, but, into but, the but, but, but if you're an older person, don't, 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 I mean, wouldn't you be worried about damaging your knees and your ankles, doing jumping around like this? Isn't that a little bit risky? Absolutely. So here's how I do it. How do you do it? Uh, can I show you? Yes. <laughs> what I tell people to do is to start with a partial jump. Okay. So you just go down, up. So, oh, I'll just do the only thing I can do. Okay. Which is a small part of a jump. Okay. But then you can go down. Okay. Down through the heels. Whoa. And down that and that heels. actually helps your. Well, eventually. You'll be able to go up and down more. Oh, I see. Right. I see. So you just start slow. You, you start, start and work up. Okay. Very progressively. So it's so progressive that no one can really, uh, no one can not do it if you, if you could stand up at all. Mm -hmm. I even tell people, look, if you want to, hold on to something. Okay. Okay. And, and not for like five minutes, right? Three times a week. <laughs> I think that's plenty. That's, or even less, right? Two, two and a half minutes or something, right? I mean, just, just a quick... That's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. And the thing that, that I think is valuable about this entire program, Change Your Age, mm -hmm. is that people can find ways to mobilize themselves and become younger in their mobility, dexterity, their ability to do lots of things that they did only when they were younger. I see, I and see. And so in that way, people really do change their age. That's right, that's right. I start, uh, I have programs in this, and I have questions in the book about this, which is, what do you feel you've given up? What do you no longer do that you used to enjoy doing? And you know, people go, oh, geez, I, I, I don't ski anymore. I, I can't, my, my knees can't take it, or whatever. Or I don't play tennis because of I my knees. I stopped playing tennis right, because, right, yeah, right. it's one thing after another. Right, right. And uh, you mentioned dancing. Yeah, there are some people who don't dance anymore. Right. And, and so how can we get people back to a time when they could do that by looking at what's the thing that stopped them? And it could be an old injury. It could be some... But that's right. I mean, yeah. usually it's, a, it's knees, I think. There are a lot of problems. People have a lot of problems with knees. A lot of problems with knees, a lot of problems with hips. With hips, yeah. And so, and for some people, certain sports will hurt their back. Mm -hmm. But most people haven't considered that maybe they never learned to move that well to begin with. I see. Mm. And so, where we learn this is usually when we're very young. So, in Change Your Age, what we do is take people back to the movements that they would have done originally when they were very young. Oh. And at the time, probably had no awareness of the fact that they were learning things. So you start people on the mat, like flat we down? We start on the floor. And then you like push up, like, 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 like you're doing a push up? Yes. I saw, I saw that you know, picture in the book. Yes. We have several core positions. And so the and you have like five core positions, right? Yes. And yes. what are those five core positions? So you're lying, mm -hmm. sitting, mm -hmm. crawling, mm -hmm. crouching. 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 A very important position. And standing. Now, how is crouching? Uh, why is that an important position? Well, can you, I show you? Yes, show me, show me. <laughs> so, crouching is important because... I'm going to come up and so I can see you better. <laughs> we can both do this. Okay, okay. Like, yeah, how, do you, how do you crouch? Okay, so you have to get a wide enough stance. Okay. Every, every athlete does this spontaneously. Okay. And get the arms to be straight. I think I've lost my... Scent, my wait one second here. Huh? Ooh. Huh. Well, I'll just relax I'll, in crouching. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, all right. So a lot of people have to learn how to do this position. Okay. But it is a natural position. So it's a, a way of putting your hands on your knees okay. so that the weight of your upper body mm -hmm. can go down through your arms okay. into your legs. Okay. And you really feel that. You really feel the strain of that. I mean, you really feel, you really feel like you're, actually, you're 
your muscles are definitely contracting. Mm. You really feel mm. that. But you can also relax them. Yes. Because well, I, while you're cr while you're in a crouch, you yeah. re you relax. You you, yeah. you think you you, you okay. just let you let this line of okay. the bones That's going all the way down to the foot, all the way up through the shoulders. Mm -hmm. That that just there it is. Okay, very good. It has to be learned. Basketball players do this all the time. Do Baseball they? players, yes. The, uh, <laughs> basketball players stand like this a lot, and it's a way of relaxing. Wow. It, and so where you can move very quickly. Uh -huh. It's a position you can get out of and go left, right, forward. Okay, you can just take off from <laughs> yes, that position. Yes. Okay. Are, in fact, are professional athletes using this method, the Feldenkrais method? Some of them are starting to, and, and it's, it's, I think it's catching on more and more. Because people realize, finally, mm -hmm. that a lot of repetition and the building of strength, mm -hmm. the building of flexibility, mm -hmm. isn't a matter of like daily routines and going on and on mm -hmm. for 30 minutes, an hour, hour and a half. Oh. <laughs> and what you need to do is learn how to move more easily. Yes. And learn how to, how to improve. And, and, do, and do it quickly, right? So like, we do well, like what would be a name of a professional athlete that's done this? Mm -hmm. Um, Adam Oates, uh, uh, okay. a very famous hockey player. Hockey player, okay. Yeah. That's cool. I mean, that's, uh, well, you know, I, how come there hasn't been an, um, a lot of uh, TV shows and, you know, it, ha have, it seems like it's not really out there, that a lot of people don't know about this. No, I, I, I think that that's going to start now. Okay. And I think it'll start with Change Your Age. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, so you're... Well, because that's a concept that people can really understand. Okay. It's, can I improve my mobility mm -hmm. so that I can move like I did when I was younger? Right, and, and maintain that. And, and maintain that. That's very important. And then, and but I guess I think the concern is people with injuries. Like, well, how am I going to do that? Because I've been told that I, this can't be really in, healed. Or I mean, mm. um, <laughs> there it needs to be <laughs> surgically repaired. What, yeah. what do you do when people say that to you? When you say they say, "Well, if something needs to be surgically repaired," and I think a lot of things do. Okay. You, you know, you, you could have very serious injuries to the joints. Right. And so, I think people have to be prepared for a surgery by learning to move more easily and learning to use. Let's say it's a knee surgery. Okay. Well, then you've got to learn to move your hips and your back. Okay. And make it easier, and then after the surgery. How are you going to really rehabilitate yourself without learning how to move in a new way after the surgery? Right. Well, one of the things I noticed you, in your book, you said, what, what, what can you do if you have a protru protruding abdomen and an overly arched back? Mm. What can you do to improve a situation like that? Well, a lot of people don't realize that their, their abdomen protruding is a, a matter of how they're standing and sitting and arching their back. Oh, really? So, yeah. This is, here's my weight loss program, okay, how, to, okay. how to lose 10 pounds. Okay. <laughs> so let's say somebody didn't use their abdominal muscles properly, okay. and they arch their back. So if I arch my back, my stomach will go Goes forward. out, exactly. And if I don't know how to use the muscles in here, mm -hmm. it'll it go out further. Way, and all of a sudden, I'm shorter, I'm older. That's right. And, more you have, and you have a protruding belly. And I have a protruding belly and an arched back, supported by an arched back. Okay. Now, so I'll look heavier. Yes, you will. Yeah, and I'll so, feel heavier. <laughs> so if I learned what I could do to turn my pelvis under and let my back release, get more length here, okay. a little more support here, I'm longer, I'm taller. It's like I've lost weight. Exactly. Because the same volume of my person <laughs> isn't going that way. <laughs> so it's, 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 again, it's about awareness, right? Yes. And then, and how, now can what, I, how can you lengthen your spine? And then what about the posture? You know, the posture uh, situation, you, you've got, you don't worry about having your, your uh, arms, your, your back, uh, your shoulders way back. You don't worry no. about that? Okay. No. I think that all those things will fall into place if you understand ways of using the pelvis and back. Okay. And one of the things I thought was interesting in this book was that you said that this program can enhance sleep. Because mm. so many people have restless legs, mm. restless, they just can't stay asleep. They, mm. And so do these movements actually give you a better chance of having a, a nice <laughs> evening sleep? Mm. Many people can fall asleep very easily because of excess tension. That's right. So if you don't feel how you create that tension, if you aren't aware of that, of course it's harder to fall asleep. You know, sure. you can only go so far. Or you'll 
awaken after you fall asleep mm -hmm. because the tension is still there, but you have fallen asleep. <laughs> <laughs> and so many people find if they learn to really relax with slow, very precise, very comfortable movements, and they can make those movements slow, precise, and focus on it. So, so they do those movements right before they go to sleep? Yes. Right before they go to sleep. I recommend to people that if they have trouble sleeping, to pick some of the first lessons in the Change Your Age program and practice those lessons wow. just for a few minutes. Okay, that's very good. And, um, and you feel like you don't need to do that many repetitions, right? You can just do it without go getting too um, worried about how long you do it, right? It just well, no, I think that how long we should do something is how long it takes us to learn. Mm -hmm. Now, if you thought of it, your body is a musical instrument. Yes. If you thought of it that way, how long would it take to learn to play the piano? Whoa, well, that could take a long time. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but at the same time, once you've learned the basics of a piano, you don't necessarily have to be the greatest piano player of all time. You, you know, you don't that's want right, to be. That's right. But you could still enjoy playing the piano. Okay. Well, that's wonderful. Well, Dr. Malvin, how, how will members of our audience, where can they go to get your book? I mean, is it, uh, you have a website? Yes, I I'm, can be found at changeyourage.net. www.changeyourage.net. Changeyourage.net. Wow. And, of course, the book can be purchased through Amazon. Okay, and the book can be purchased through Amazon. Okay, Amazon.com. Amazon.com or Change Your Age. Now, are like you that. going to be going to um, making, uh, giving lectures around the country about your book? And uh, is it just, it just, yes, just, it just, it just hot off the press, isn't it? And <laughs> yes, it's hot off the presses. So. <laughs> <laughs> and so you're going around telling people. And I generally, yes, we've been working with the Equinox uh, Fitness Clubs, and I've done presentations around the country at several large Equinox Clubs. And then uh, we're, we have a whole schedule of programs that I do. So rather than then just going and talking about it, we do uh, programs. I just completed here in, in Washington a, a uh, weekend workshop. And so people could take a two-day program were the and change your age. And were the, people, were the people older or younger or all ages? Were they, were they, they were all ages. They were all ages. Well, it's interesting because some people in their late 30s, mm -hmm. approaching 40, become afraid of aging. Yes. At 40 years old, oh, my God, my life is half over. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's right. It's, and... And, uh, oh, my God, I, I think I saw a wrinkle in my eye. And what, you know, it's amazing. So then there's another set of people yes. in their 60s who start to fear getting old because they've lost functionalities right, right, that right. they can regain. Right. They don't know it. Well, it's been great talking with you and hearing about your book. And I really hope that you come back again. Yeah. And um, I really hope everyone in the audience has a chance to read Change Your Age. <laughs> Thank you, Lois. Thank you. <laughs>